Welcome back, guys. I know it's been a minute since I've uploaded a video on this channel. All right. So I am going to do something for you guys every week. Right. We'll be going, or I said, we'll be going over a weekly analysis. Right. It's going to be a Sunday, Monday video where I give you guys, you know, our outlooks for the week. And then it'll be a midweek review on seeing how our analysis is doing, if we got to flip biases or whatnot. And then we'll have a, at the end of the week review on our analysis and how we can improve. Right. And I, and I know, you know, I know some of you guys may have noticed I did say we or ours. Uh, I will be doing this with a good friend of mine. He's also an ICT trader. He goes by Leo. Say what's up, Leo. Hey, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Um, good. Let's start by going through the economic calendar for the week. Sounds good. Sounds um, good. yeah. So, uh, something that stands out to me is the ref holders. Monday, we have uh, USD News for Empire State Manufacturing Index at 8.30. We have um, core retail sales for a dollar at 8.30 as well on Tuesday. CPI for a pound at 2 a.m. Uh, unemployment claims and Fed Chair Powell speaking on Thursday, which is uh, a very eventful day. I would be more mindful of my trading on that day and a little bit of light news on friday yeah yeah sounds good yeah as like leo said we'll try to get our week our uh, you know trading done before powell so before thursday i recommend that and we don't really pay attention to what is being you know forecasted or previous or what the actual news event is going to do right we're more concerned of that's going to be a time where volatility will be injected in the market all right so Keep that in mind and let's get started. So we're starting off on Dixie, right? Uh, I gave you guys a little bit of my bias here. Just show you, just to really give you guys um, what I'm looking at for Dixie, right? If you guys take a look at this, we see Dixie, uh, in my opinion, I want to see Dixie move higher, run these buy side liquidity out, target these daily and balance lows, maybe get into here and it maybe even get above and trade into this old high since uh, November 21st, about a year ago. Will it do that this week? I'm I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if it missed it and it just kind of built up for next week. However, I also wouldn't be surprised if they just used all the news event and just kept punching this higher because in my opinion, this they can get to this in like three, four candles realistically. Um, but yeah, before that happens, I do have these, um, these levels labeled out here uh, at a discount. Right, I'm. I apologize for the yellow uh, box there. You guys can't really see it, but that is the volume imbalance right there. Right, I'll be more mindful for that color next time. But uh, I do have the daily imbalance uh, drawn out here for you guys. Also, the consequent encroachment, and I am looking for price to come lower into this level. Maybe take out that low, run short term lows here because that is an internal range liquidity. If you guys have been through core, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Should run through that low, and then looking for aggressive repricing higher targeting this buy side right and then i do label i did label out a uh, h4 bullish order block mean threshold there where we see price uh touch into that speaking about h4 let's go on to h4 right so i just it's a little bit more detailed now you guys can start seeing it bring your attention to this bullish, uh, bullish order block here All right we see price come into it stab it a lot of times going through it ultimately respecting that mean threshold we see it tag it and immediately run away from it right so that tells me hey they're used a higher time frame pd array in level discount so if they want to continue pushing higher for these highs right i'm looking for them to either reprice again take out some short terms low short term low here and obviously you can see the short term low is also the daily imbalance high and there's also a nice inversion gap here I think price can come down to and use and respect, right? But will that happen? You know, you just got to wait and see, be patient in our hands. So even though I said, I want to see price go higher, I don't want you guys to just say, okay, he said it's going to go higher, start buying. You can buy like a 0 0.01 lot and then just put your stop loss like below this daily imbalance low. I don't really want to see that get taken out or even this inversion favorite get taken out. So uh, if you guys, you know, want to, want to also say, hey, I see uh, Dixie going higher too. You guys can try to uh, look for this and wait for this first before entering your other trades on your other uh, USD pairs, right? Is there anything else you want to add here, Leo? Oh, not at the moment, no. No. Okay, good. Let's uh, let's move on then. 
So your USD, right? We kind of look at it. It just looks like Dixie flipped over, right? We do see South South liquidity resting below here. This anchored to an old low. You guys can pull that up on your own charts, right? Ultimately targeting this low for now. We want to see price come up higher, maybe trade into this or try to get into this and then run lower, right? Uh, if it fails to do that um, and Dixie does run into that low, we can just see that as SMT for it to continue running lower. Uh, for Dixie to continue, I mean, for EU to continue running lower. Um, there is a massive um, inversion fair value gap there that we can see uh, price maybe, or just, yeah, inversion fair value gap there that price could use to then continue going lower. All right, we see price come up to this, create a nice fair value gap here, looking for EU to try and get up there. Meanwhile, Dixie also try to get lower, right? If you go back to Dixie really quick, right? I want to see Dixie run down into this and then run higher. You want to see the opposite. I want to see run up higher and then run lower, right? So using intermarket analysis here. Um, but yeah, that should be pretty good for the daily time from your USD. Did you want to add anything here um, for daily, Leo? Yeah, so for daily, um, there is that wick of the Friday candle, down candle. I'm paying attention to the uh, consequent encroachment of that about 105 400 level something around there uh if we go down to the four hour you'll kind of see a, a a premium pda rate there i kind of want price to be more sensitive towards that um i don't really want it to trade through like um into the daily imbalance like that would be preferred to have your loss pretty heavy and kind of just um run down into um to, towards the downside um that's something i'm paying attention to as well yeah yeah definitely yeah so this is uh something that could be, be uh used to help eu stay below this high here and below, below the daily imbalance allowing you know consolidation here while dixie continue runs lower that would be great too because we could see that as an smt right leo yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah so this is just a little bit on the h4 cleaning up for you guys giving you guys a higher time frame analysis for the weekly outlook, right? So obviously we're still looking for EU to go lower, Dixie to go higher. We're just trying to see how they want to uh, price that in. Uh, we can move on from EU. Oh, this is yours, Leo. Go for it. All right. This is a pound. As um, suggested by our early analysis, um, I want to see a bearish bias on pound dollar um, as the dollar is running higher or consolidating. Um, a couple levels I'm really looking at are the daily imbalances, uh, sell side imbalance by center fish to see how low on the upside, the premium side, and the buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, high and low on the discount end. Um, same with the um, Friday down close candle. Um, as we run into a smaller time frame, you'll see later on. Um, I don't want to see price run up into um, the midpoint of that wake. Like I wanted to see if it does run up in there, I want it to respect the midpoint. And worst case scenario, um, we punch into the sell side imbalance by side inefficiency low at um, around one two 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 fifty three level. Like just kind of like tag it and run lower. I don't really want to see any like body close into like over 50% of that wick. And I want to target the um, imbalance on the downside. I want price to kind of run into that and take out uh, that low on around the 9th. Oh, that Friday, uh, uh, October 6th low inside that little imbalance range. Yeah. Those, 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 uh, those should be my targets, and best case scenario, we run into sell side liquidity at one twenty three seventy one. That's my drawn liquidity, and we can move on to the four hour now. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, Leo. Go for it. All right, so on the four hour, um, we see that price ran up into a premium. That's the before hour, um, kind of respecting it, and then rejecting it, um. And it kind of runs away, expands lower really quickly, creating a couple of balances. 
Um, on the top end of that gap, I don't want to see it traded into around the the, the higher one. Yeah, you know, that one I don't want to see any trade into that. I want to see that left open. I want to see the gap towards the equilibrium range of the range that we created. Um, I want to see um like really really price have a really tough time getting up there. Um, and I would be looking for divergences with the dollar to see this either consolidate and having dollar run higher, uh, as Alan said earlier, and for just a really heavy um, pound into this week. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. I'm also looking for that, too. Uh, is there anything else you have to add for this? Yeah, sure. Um, like uh, there's a little there's a little liquidity void at on Friday uh the 6th uh yeah right right uh, yeah um i kind of i will be paying attention to those those levels as well mm. uh, as we trade into this week um but that's about it i'm i'm bullish um on the downside and i want to see price respect premium levels yeah yeah definitely let's move on from gu right uh we got crude oil here go for it it's still yours go for it yeah uh, crude oil made a high, um, and uh, traded expanded lower into a inversion fair value gap around in September. Wait, no, that's a uh, that's August. Sorry, um, there's a little imbalance in August around the middle of August. There was an inversion fair value gap there. Price traded into it, rejects it, um. There's a big gap, a liquidity void on there. Um, I'll be watching that as well. But for now, price is around at an equilibrium within this uh, most recent price range. Uh, I want to see how price reacts to this um, bearish order block and its wick, most importantly. Um, I want to see how it respects the middle of the wick and the mean threshold of that blo order block. Um, as a, this is sort of, 50 50 for me um i'm more heavily looking towards the downside but i do believe that since price is at equilibrium right now it could uh, run into a deeper premium before going lower so that's why i have buy side liquidity marked out there um as you'll see on the four hour it's more apparent um yeah i'll be watching how price reacts at these levels because we are currently at an equilibrium right now yeah let's move on to the four hour for them go ahead Yep, so four hour. Um again, like I said, um uh, when we were on the daily chart, um I am looking at the equilibrium right now. And it would not surprise me if we traded a little higher, but um if we did trade too high, it would uh throw off my um, bearish stance on crude oil. However, um, with the rising dollar, there is a good chance we might see a lower prices on crude oil. A um, couple um, targets I have in mind um, are the daily imbalance low. I want to see how price trades into that. If we go lower into this week, I want to see how it reacts to um, 85. Um, I do have this Buy side imbalance, sell side efficiency um, marked out in green. Um, and I do want to see how price trades into that range as well. Um, whether we bounce or not, we'll have to see. Um, but no, going with our um, bearish stance on the market, I do want to see a disrespect of these discount levels and trade into the um, daily volume imbalance level and eventually shooting through the low and targeting sell side liquidity um, at around 82 and 81.50. Yeah, looks good, looks good, yeah. Definitely, I think um, if crude oil does want to drop, it should drop soon. If not, it's probably gonna be reaching for a deeper premium, like you said. It did run out buy side already, right? But it's still kind of chilling here. Don't know what it wants to do yet. I think it's probably just waiting on news, in my opinion. Maybe 
big run up higher to its own high, run into um, what you labeled out here, and then drop lower, targeting probably this inefficiency here, and then see how it reacts from there. All right. Moving on from crude oil, all right, we have S&P E-mini futures. It's still on you, Leo. Take it over. All right. Um, this is the daily chart for ES. Um, I did mark out. Um, it's a little on the left side of the chart, but um, that that up candle there, there's a little um down candle right before it, and um, that's like a daily bearish breaker. Uh, that price was traded into. Um, and we see that it rejected it on a daily. A um, couple things I am concerned about for this week. Um, I marked out two purple levels, three purple levels actually. So the bearish order block on the daily, the open and close, I'm taking the body of that. I'm um, taking the 50% of that, marking out mean threshold that order block. We see that price um, traded into it just wicked right past it a little bit and promptly rejected that. That's a good sign for me from being bearish. Um, I don't want to see um, price kind of move up there anymore. Um, if anything, most premium we get is the open, bearish order block open of it. Um, and um, I do have a bullish breaker daily open in red at 4349, just marked out as a concern. Um, but I do want to see price disrespect that level, move lower, and eventually targeting the uh, dealing range low, sell side liquidity at 4, 2, 3, 5, 50, um, and not really going into premium anymore. I think uh, most of the business is finished on the premium end here. Um, I do have a couple imbalances labeled in green here. This would be high and low. That's just a concern, like a... To, to mark out premium PDA raise. Price is at a premium, um, rejects it. I want to see lower prices. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. I made a mistake, guys, if you guys saw my mouse. I, I thought he was talking about this breaker, but he was actually talking about this old breaker over here that you guys can't see, but you guys pull up on your chart. You guys could see it there. He's referencing this breaker when I was hovering this one. That was my mistake. Um, But yeah, moving on from S&P 500, this is the four-hour chart for you right now, right? Yeah, for our it. chart. Go yeah, so it. I do have a new work week opening gap high and low here marked out. Um the levels four three three nine seven five and four three one nine even. Um I kind of wanted to see price move into this range uh mid within the week, kind of sit there a little bit, um uh give it a couple pass throughs and then continue expanding lower. That's one thing I had in mind for this. Uh, it'd be nice if it uh, ES was really heavy uh, from this point on. Um, like I said, uh, it price ran up to the mean threshold of the daily bear shoulder block it marked in purple, um, rejected it really, really well. And I just don't want to see price uh, run up there because I think the the business is kind of finished on the this 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 little range here. It's been uh, delivered. And so I want to see price work downwards from now on. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I also want to see ES being heavy um, because um, going on the next chart here, we have NAS, right? And ES, NAS, they are both pairs that move in tandem, right? I do want to bring up the fact that we can see how there's this uh, inefficiency here. Price kind of stabs into it, trades into the constant encroachment of that down wick right there, right? Comes out, respects it perfectly, drops lower, Right, price comes up, continues dropping lower, creates this little inefficiency here that it could kind of fill up. And I'm looking at that as a uh, rebalance, like immediate rebalance for them to then continue running, punching below this low here, and then eventually try and get down to this lows down here. Right, I do have a lower target that I like. I want to see. I want to see Nas continue being heavy, right? Just like ES, right? Um, but yeah, at the meantime. Looking at NAS to continue going heavy to become very heavy, draw towards um these sell side liquidity here, right? We I think this uh, consult this consolidation here was accumulation. This was the manipulation higher into a premium level, and I want them to start expanding very aggressively lower, right? Moving on from uh, oh wait, before I move on, did you have anything to add, uh, Leo? Mm, no, 
Not really. Okay, no worries. No worries. Uh, yeah, I did have that um inversion gap here as well. So if price does want to get up here, I am looking for that for them to kind of use that as like a, a wall where there comes up into the sound right there, immediately rebalances that uh, with this uh, candle here and then drops lower. Moving on to the uh, four hour time frame, right? Added on that this is an intermediate term high that I want them to respect, right? It, this is uh, also an immediate rebalance in my opinion, right? Comes right here, fully closes that uh, the gap in and we see a big displacement lower, right? Uh, and for this one, I do think that they want to kind of trade, try to get back into at least equilibrium or trading back into this bearish order block, right? Because if they do do that, and then uh, we can look for them to either try to respect, try to look for it to see if they respect that and want to continue going lower, or they just keep punching higher and higher and higher. They might just run up this high. And then at that point, I probably sideline, just let them kind of continue going higher because they're probably looking for a higher um, buy side liquidity. But yeah, I drew out uh, some more sell-side liquidity. I did not draw out the uh, opening gap for you guys. Um, if you guys want to draw that out on your chart, you guys can, right? But I just, for this um, analysis, kind of want to show you guys where the draws would be at. And I'm looking for them to uh, get to get rated, basically. Uh, but yeah, did you have anything else you want to add for this one too, Leo? Yeah, uh, that, that opening gap, on uh, this was a little heavier on that it kind of really it traded a little bit into it uh we, it wicked into it and it's kind of consolidating there now um and it's kind of interesting to see um what it'll do next because um i think es is a little lighter nasdaq is a little ahead mm, so, yeah yeah definitely yeah. definitely yeah we can we can go back to es really quick just to see it um like the opening gaps here, right? Yeah. Yeah. ES failed to get into that opening gap while obviously NAS um already punched into it. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens here. Maybe ESK will catch up, send this thing, send ES lower, and then uh, NAS will have to catch up after. But at the moment, I think we both are in consensus that NAS is probably the uh, heavier uh chart at the moment for it to continue going low, rating the sell side down here. Uh, we can move on from NAS. Did you have anything else you want to add? Mm, no no okay at the moment and i think that should wrap up our video i totally forgot that was the end of the uh analysis but like i said um we just want to give you guys our weekly analysis at the beginning of the week where i will do a midweek review on it and see how it's going how the charts are moving etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we'll have a end of the week review on what happened throughout the week um what we were able to capitalize on and just to try and improve it just share with you guys um, is there anything else you have to add for them, Leo? Um, I would be careful on Thursday. Mm. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah well, it's, uh, it's, it's set to be an exciting week. Yeah. Well, so let's, let's see. Let's see what we can do, uh, do for this week. But yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Right, if you guys have any questions or any concerns or anything you guys want us to talk about or cover, make sure you just leave that in the comments. We'll do our best to reply to uh, most of you guys, if not all of you guys. Right. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Good luck and good trading, you guys. Peace.